The Second World War was a conflict so vast and destructive that it affected almost everyone on Earth and shaped the world we live in today. How did this cataclysmic series of events begin? Though tensions had been simmering in Europe for years, war officially began on September 1, 1939, when Germany invaded Poland. But it wasn't just a German-Polish war, it was a world war. Britain and France responded just two days later by declaring war on Germany on September 3rd. But was that the end of it? Not by a long shot. Germany invaded the Soviet Union on June 22, 1941. Then, on December 7th, Germany's ally Japan spread the war across the Pacific Ocean by launching an attack on the American naval base at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. Watching Hollywood movies, you could have been led to think that most of the action in World War II happened between Germany and America, with Britain showing up for a few aerial battles here and there. But which countries actually fought in the war? In fact, many nations were touched by the conflict, but the main combatants can be grouped into two opposing factions. Germany, Japan, and Italy were the Axis powers. France, Great Britain, the United States, and the Soviet Union were the Allied powers. China, which had been engaged in a war with Japan concurrently with World War II, is also sometimes counted among the Allied powers. With so many powerful nations involved, World War II demanded uncommon leadership. Many of the leaders of the time are almost legendary figures today, some seen as heroes and some as history's greatest monsters. Who were the leaders of the Axis and the Allies during World War II? The Allied powers were led by Winston Churchill, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Joseph Stalin, Premier of the Soviet Union, Charles de Gaulle, leader of the French Resistance, and Franklin D. Roosevelt, President of the United States. Due to Roosevelt's death, in the final days of the war, the United States was led by President Harry S. Truman. The Axis powers were led by a man whose name is now synonymous with evil, Adolf Hitler, the Chancellor of Nazi Germany along with Benito Mussolini, Prime Minister of Italy, and Hideki Tojo, Prime Minister of Japan, succeeded by Kuniaki Koiso. World War II lasted for more than five years, and in that time, a few pivotal events stand out. Even in a war of this massive scale, some days are known for turning the tide of history. What decisive moments helped determine the course of the war? On June 3, 1942, the Battle of Midway began, and it was a big one. The battle lasted for four days and resulted in American forces destroying Japan's first line carrier force. This is widely recognized as the point at which the Pacific front of the war turned against Japan. Along with the Battle of Guadalcanal in late 1942 and early 1943, Midway ended Japan's ability to prosecute an offensive war. Meanwhile, the tides of war turned in Europe in February of 1943, when Germany met a decisive defeat at the hands of the Soviet Union at the Battle of Stalingrad. More than one million Soviet troops and tens of thousands of civilians died in this epic battle in defense of the city. However, the cost to Germany was the destruction of two entire armies and a failure to take Stalingrad. This defeat was the beginning of the end for Germany on the eastern front of the war. After more than five years of grueling conflict, World War II finally ground to a halt in 1945. How did it end? The final stages of the war in Europe began with the Allied invasion of Normandy. D-Day, as it is known, was June 6, 1944. This invasion opened a second front in Europe. Germany made a final offensive push in the winter of 1944 and 1945 in the Ardennes, but this effort was a failure. With the Red Army advancing from the east, claiming territory for the Soviets, and American and British troops advancing through France from the west, the Allied forces converged on Berlin. Hitler committed suicide on April 30, 1945. The war in Europe officially ended days later on May 8. The war in the Pacific, however, kept grinding on into the summer. The American island hopping campaign had taken a toll on Japanese installations in the Pacific. Firebombing campaigns killed hundreds of thousands of people in Japanese cities, and the sheer horror of the atomic bombs that struck Hiroshima and Nagasaki in August of 1945, along with the threat of Soviet invasion, finally knocked Japan out of the war. I now invite the representatives of the Emperor of Japan to sign the instrument of surrender at the places indicated.